right, we are back, and we are here with Ernie Pack. And he Hello. is, uh, let's see, he is owner of Pac-Man Lawn Care. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Business. And then co-founder of Pac-Man Paranormal and president of Midnight Wolf Pack Productions. Yes, sir. How you doing today, Ernie? Doing great. Doing great. Good to be here. How are you guys? I'm uh, doing all right. A little tired from work today, but hanging in there. I understand. I understand. I'm uh, semi-retired right now since it's winter time and I own a lawn care company, you know, so <laughs> there's not a whole lot of grass growing around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know a few people that uh, that who have lawn care companies, but they also have plows for their trucks. Yeah. But of course, you're out of... Uh, what did it say you were out of Kentucky? Where yeah. you guys don't get much snow down there, do you? Well, it depends. I mean, you know, we'll have years where we'll get uh, two or three bouts of 10 or 12 inches of snow. And then other years, like so far this year and the last couple of years, we've had basically nothing. Woke yeah. up to about an inch on the ground this morning, but it was gone by noon. Yeah. You know? yeah. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ernie. I'm going to ask you this this opening question, even though we just started chatting for a couple of minutes here. Um, this this question is for people who haven't seen your site or checked out your Facebook or, you know, so they don't know much about you. So what got you started into the paranormal field like like you are right now? And what got well, you interested in it? I, I've always had an interest. I mean, as far back as I can remember, um, I, I grew up in a house that uh, – I had older siblings and they all talked about different ghost experiences and uh, things like that in the house. My uh, grandmother was one half Cherokee Indian and, you know, very spiritual person. And she would talk all the time about, you know, dead relatives coming to visit her and things like that. So it just always seemed normal to me. It didn't seem like, you know, a lot of kids are brought up saying, oh, that stuff with with their parents telling them that stuff's not real it's you know there's no such thing as ghosts or there's no such thing as monsters or whatever and uh i just i never was brought up that way so i always had a belief in it and i mean i can remember uh like in school going to the library and checking out every book i could find on ufos ghosts uh bigfoot you name it and uh just always had a fascination with it uh, grew up here in Valley Station, Kentucky, right over the hill from Waverly Hills, uh, a, lot, a place that a lot of people say is oh, the most oh, haunted yeah. place in the world. Uh, yeah. Used to sneak in there a lot as a kid, as a teenager, and had some experiences uh, while we were doing that, while we were not hunting ghosts. You know, we were in there to run the halls and uh, race wheelchairs down the halls, things like that. <laughs> Uh, but we had DSW a few times. It was it was a very cool place back then. Uh, it still is. I mean, it's 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 an awesome place, and I love it. But uh, uh, eventually, I mean, I got to where, as a teenager and then young adult, I mean, I would any local legend or haunted place I heard about, whatever, I was just drawn to it, and I would go check it out. Uh, and it, I don't know. I've just, uh, I've always loved the stuff. And well, he then. With you and you could have joined us. What's that? Well, I was kind of replying to Denise there. Oh, yeah. Well, she, she said, nobody ever wants me on here. They just want to talk to you. And I'm like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> she could have joined us. <clears throat> well, she'd have to do like an hour of hair and makeup now because <laughs> <laughs> she's 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 always very nervous about coming on. But uh, anyway, eventually I went up to Waverly Hills and started taking tours back when the Madden Leafs first bought the building. And they started doing tours up there. And uh, I got even more intrigued with the building and kept going back and offering to help out in any way I could. Eventually I became a guide there and posted, <laughs> uh, 
a host for the private investigations and uh, did a little bit of everything there at Waverly over the years. And I met Denise up there last year. What's that? Waverly Hills is a pretty uh, well-known place in the paranormal world. Yeah, yeah. In my time up there, I have met, I mean, the who's who of, of paranormal investigators. And I've experienced everything from A to Z in the paranormal. Uh, it, it's a fascinating place. I mean, I, I love it and uh, hope to get back up there someday. But, uh, I, well, we've got a private investigation booked for June 20th. I know I'll be there then, but that's cool. hope to get back up there on a more frequent basis, if you know what I'm saying. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, I met Denise up there last year, or 2019, June 20th of 2019, when she came for a private investigation. And uh, a lot of things happened. Her and I eventually started hanging out a lot. Uh, and we went on a private or a residential investigation, I guess you'd call it. Uh, I had a guy come to me talking about, you know, he was having some experiences and needed the ghost hunting team. And Denise was the first person I thought of. And I called her, we wound up, uh, taking the case and, uh, come to find out like a lot of times when you take the residential cases, it was just somebody who was a little off his rocker and there was nothing really paranormal going on. <laughs> but, uh, but that, uh, that brought us a little bit closer. And then we, I went to old South Pittsburgh with her and we started going around a lot more together to different places. And eventually we decided to form our own team, Pac-Man paranormal. And, uh, it was just about a year ago this week, actually, that we actually formed the team. And the team is just her and I and her daughters and my son. Uh, her daughters and my son rarely join us because they're, you know, either teenagers or young adults. No, no, she doesn't. She doesn't let me do that. But uh, we, uh, I mean, we started doing a, a podcast on Paranormal Warehouse last year and it, it grew in popularity to the point where we were, we would have like the most popular video at the end of the week, just about every week. And it's like, wow, I don't know what we're doing because we're not putting any evidence out there. We're just sitting here talking. We have some great guests. I mean, we've had, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the folks you've heard of in the paranormal field on our show. And, uh, and we just, uh, you know, kind of keep it light. We like to laugh, cut up and talk about things besides just boring technical stuff or evidence review or this or that. You know, we talk about mm -hmm. the van rides to and from the investigations and the cutting up and stopping at drive throughs and putting in ridiculous orders so that whoever's driving has a hard time. <laughs> that kind of, you know, I mean, we just, we try to have fun and we bring in, we bring in other teams uh, from around the country uh, trying to show, I mean, I know that it's a bad word in a lot of people's eyes, but uh, para unity, it can be a real thing. I mean, we can all share and learn from one another. You know, I, I, I got to say, since you brought that up, I got to say that uh, when Mark and I have gone out and done our investigations, we started doing investigations in 2019, March of 2019. Uh, we've met a couple of different teams and stuff throughout Wisconsin, and every single time they've been nothing but nice, giving us tips, telling us about the equipment they're using. and. Mm -hmm. You'd Absolutely. And then and then later when obviously, you know, for us, COVID is kind of a blessing in disguise because it led to us having interviews with other paranormal people, too. And every single time it's been a blast, you know, with these people talking to yeah. all over. I mean, we've had guests from the UK and it, it's been great. You know, it's been a blessing in disguise. <clears throat> but we had the, the U.S. paranormal team on once and we met them in person before we started doing interviews and mm -hmm. 
it was just great because when we saw them for the first time, they were unloading something pretty huge. Do you even remember what that was? They weren't unloading anything huge. They had a bunch of equipment that they were unloading. They had like four or five five vans there. Um, It wasn't, it wasn't as big as you remember it, Joe. It it was about the size (laughs) of a small radio. Um, Their tech guy built it. It is similar to a um, obelisk or something like that. Or, you know, it's one of those that that it, it was kind of like a um, a spirit bar. Oh, now I'm getting some feedback. <laughs> I'm not hearing anything. So it, it, it it's similar to a spirit box, and I think a, um, one of the obelisk things to where you know it has the the vocabulary inside of it. it has a word bank and yeah yeah. And he was he was tweaking it to try and get it to to sound and, and work a little bit better. Yeah, they were always filming a documentary at the time. Yeah, yeah, they were actually filming a documentary, and it was in the Whitewater, is, uh, Wisconsin. Which is a Whitewater. Yep. You know, uh, I hate to jump around or jump ahead, whatever, no, but ahead. Uh, you know, you guys are from Wisconsin. Do you know a team, GBPR? Green Bay Paranormal Research? No. No, we haven't met them yet. I don't know if they're still in existence, but uh, 12 or 2000, I guess 2000 and, yeah, I guess it would be 12 years ago. 2009, back when I first started doing private investigations at at Waverly, first started helping host, uh, they came up and it was just three guys and they asked me if I wanted to join them, you know, in the building for a while and walk around. And back at that time, it was okay if I did that, I could do it. And uh, I went up there to the fifth floor with them. If you know anything about Waverly Hills, there's a story of a nurse who was found hanging outside of room 502. Right. I've, I've heard the stories. And the story that's told and the story that I was told to tell and had, you know, had to tell on the tours and everything all the time was that she had hung herself because she'd become pregnant by a married doctor and, you know, contracted TB. I mean, there's a whole lot of, a lot of details about it that are always told, but uh, that story never set well with me. And um, so I always wanted to contact her. Well, I was up there that night with Green Bay Paranormal Research, and we, we had all this equipment laying out there in front of 502 trying to contact the nurse, and we didn't know her name. We didn't know anything about her, and nothing was happening, and finally, I just sat down against the elevator door, and I said, my name is Ernie. I feel like uh, maybe the story that I've been telling people about you is not true. Uh, I'm going to be up here a lot now, and I'd really like to talk with you sometimes. So could you just tell me your name? And plain as day, a disembodied voice from over in front of room 504, all three of us guys hear a little female voice say, Sarah. And so I have been going up there since 2009, every chance I had and spending as much time as I could talking to Sarah Mm -hmm. and I've gotten her, her real story and just an amazing bank of, you know, communication from her over the course of 12 years that just is, you know, it's mind blowing to me. Some of the things that I've gotten. Now, now now please tell me you got that on, on uh, audio whenever she said her name. Uh, they got it, you know, <laughs> it, it was not, it wasn't, my, I was just the host. I wasn't the investigator. I was just, you know, I didn't have any equipment up there, but they got it. And, you know, I mean, we all about jumped out of our skin because like I said, it was a quiet night. Nothing was going on. The equipment was just sitting there flat as it could be. And, and then, you know, poof, I'd, you know love, I'd love to go down to Waverly and take him down there. Well, it's, uh, it's an amazing place. They've got a few dates open for this year to book. Uh, there's some, uh, uh, a lot of uh, new, a lot of changes on the way for Waverly that uh, I think are going to be positive for the place. And 
it's it's I highly recommend it to anybody. It's my favorite favorite place by far. Cool. So um, when you guys go out and do your investigations, what kind of equipment do you actually use? Well, we take we. I mean, we've got two small cases over here. Uh, Denise and I. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got millimeters, rim pods. We've got K two meters, although I'm kind of at the point where I don't have a whole lot of faith in K2 meters because I've talked to Brandon Alvis a lot about how they can be interfered with by other electronics and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, digital recorder is the main thing, you know, a good digital recorder. Oh, definitely. Uh, we, uh, I mean, we go old school with dousing rods. Um, I don't know, just, uh, I'm trying to think what all's in that case, to be honest, <laughs> because the, here's the thing. We, you know, we formed Midnight Wolfpack Productions, like you said, mm -hmm. and we formed that. Uh, it's a collaboration of three teams, uh, Pac-Man Paranormal, After Midnight Paranormal, and the Black Wolf Paranormal. We also work closely with Bad Moon Paranormal. So anytime we're on an investigation, we usually have two or three other teams with us, and we just all kind of you know, throw all our equipment in a pile and use what, whatever's necessary. Whatever's there. Yeah. But whatever, I mean, <laughs> before we ever pull out a single piece of equipment, Denise and I will walk through the building with nothing, no flashlight, no equipment, no nothing. And just kind of feel it. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. No, I, get I, a feel I, for the place, stand quietly, listen. You can't, you, you're kind of, you're kind of feeling the energy that's around you. Well, right. Exactly. That and you also wanna, you you also wanna know what sounds are are normal for whatever. Exactly. And you mm -hmm. know, if the wind's blowing, you want to hear the the sounds of the trees outside brushing up against the building. You want to know exactly what sounds are your normal sounds when you're in. A exactly. Building. It's just like going through and doing a baseline EMF reading. Right. You know, right. you do a baseline sound and 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 movement reading because I mean, you know, there might be a door that. That swings funny every now and then or something like that when the draft changes in the building or whatever. And, you know, you just get a good baseline for the natural conditions of the building. Plus, like you said, feel the energies that are there. I mean, yeah. so, you know, so when you do that, though, have you ever thought of actually taking a, a digital recorder with you and just letting that run? And then using that also as your baseline instead of just yourselves, you know, that way well, we have that as a baseline and a reference to go back to. We, we have uh, on occasion or sometimes when we do those walkthroughs like that, we'll, we'll do blast EVP sessions in, in certain areas. Well, uh, I mean, not, not, not really do an EVP session. I mean, just take it with you and let it record, you know, and do your walkthrough. And that way you no. don't pick up on that, all the different sounds too. Yeah, that's, that's true. You're, you're right. But at some point, if, if you, cause I mean, we might take off say an investigation starts at eight o'clock, right? Okay. We might get in the building. Everybody else is unloading their equipment, equipment, putting batteries in, putting tripods together and all this stuff. And Denise and I are boom, we're gone down the hall and we might not be back for an hour, hour and a half, you know, while they're doing all that. And if we were trying to use that on that investigation, if we were to record it, record all that and use it on that investigation, it'd be an hour and a half of a review that we'd have to do before we could make the next step. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I, I, I and like Denise that says, now. then I'd have to listen to it. And I hate review. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like the last EVP sessions. Yeah, having to edit a lot of this stuff. Yeah. 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 Because he works, I'm disabled. A lot of that falls on me right now. You know, until things uh, change in the future, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> and it can lighten my load because I also schedule everybody for gas. Yeah, I'm I'm working on upgrading my my uh, PC setup so I can actually do some of the the production of the you know editing and stuff too with him. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah, to help him out. <laughs> All right, I found out, I, I read this, and I don't want to misquote anything, but I read this on, on your site somewhere. Okay. Why Pac-Man? 
Well, my name is Ernie Pack. My nickname has always been Pac-Man since before the game came out uh, back in the since before the game. Yeah. Yeah, really? people called me Pac-Man long ago. And uh, and then when the game came out, what did Pac-Man do? He chased his ghost, right? <coughs> so I just thought it was a perfect fit. Oh, yeah, it does make sense. That's, I thought it'd be a little interesting, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I didn't think a whole lot of it, like I said, because that had always been my nickname. And then, you know, when I actually put that out on the on the description in our, uh, you know, about section on our page, uh, people, I got a lot of response about that. And they're like, oh, my God, yeah, that's right. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess it is kind of, I guess it's cooler than I thought it was. <laughs> Oh, it is. It it, it 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 makes a lot of sense because you know you're out oh, yeah. there chasing ghosts. What did Pac-Man do? Well, he ate pellets and chased ghosts. Exactly. Exactly. I need <laughs> so some of them take, pellets. Take, take so. tests with you. Yeah, you need some of them pellets to keep you going, right? <laughs> yeah, take, <laughs> take, 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 take tics with you. What's that? That? Be, that could be your pellets, tic tacs. Yeah, we <laughs> uh, we occasionally will take uh, like uh, the little uh, Pepto Bismol tablets. Because you know how when you're sitting there doing an EVP session, somebody's stomach is always reacting to the drive through that you had on the way to the hey, Everybody's <laughs> stomach. It doesn't matter if you had drive through or not. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's our pellet, our power pellets, I guess. <laughs> so um, in, in, all this, in all this time that you've done your investigations, uh, what is your most favorite one? Wow. Uh, I would say, I mean, I hate to keep going back to it and sound corny, but I would say getting to know Sarah, uh, I mean, God, I, I, I've had some crazy active investigations. I mean, our last time at Brushy Mountain, uh, just a month or so ago, I saw a physical attack on someone, uh, 10 feet in front of me that was beyond anything I have ever experienced in the, I don't know, going on 20 years that I've been around this stuff. Wow. I heard about that story not too long ago. Yeah, it was, uh, we got uh, just a little bit of it on video. Uh, I mean, the, the guy that had the camera was, it was his wife that was being attacked. So, you know, he, he, I don't blame him for not getting everything in frame because he put the camera down and ran to her as she was getting dragged backwards across the floor and then thrown back to the ground. Um, but we got some of it on video and I mean, it was just, it was off the chain as far as physical, you know, a physical attack. I've seen people get scratched. I've been pushed. I've been scratched. I've bumped into somebody that wasn't there, things like that. But as far as seeing someone actually dragged, and then picked up and thrown back down. I mean, that was just freaky. <laughs> you know, I mean, I can't explain yeah, it. You know. Yeah. It it was it was it's hard to scare me and Denise. Uh, you know, we'll run toward slamming doors or a Bigfoot running through the woods, whatever. Yeah, we'll run toward it. Yeah. I, I've been I've had so many experiences over my many years on this earth that I'm jaded to it all. So, so you it doesn't bother me. So you're not limited to just looking at buildings or cemeteries or whatever. You you actually will go up looking for the cryptids. Yes, well. sir. Yeah, yeah. One of our good friends, uh, one of our closest friends, actually, is uh, Greg Yost. Uh, they they call him Squatch Man. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Squatch Man. <laughs> she say you don't run towards Bigfoot though. Okay, well, Denise will run toward Bigfoot. I grab the forty-five and take a tactical you know, position. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> Denise will literally run toward Bigfoot. <laughs> seen it? I've seen it. <laughs> but uh, no, we're open to anything. I mean, you know, when you've seen some of the crazy things that we've seen in paranormal, I'm sure you guys feel the same way. You know, I mean, every time you think that, yeah. you know, you've reached your limit as to what could be possible, 
something happens that you think, well, anything's possible. (laughs) (laughs) Bring it up, Joe. I mean, I don't think he's seen it. Bring it up. Well, that happened to us. You know, we went out, we went out looking for a cryptid. Okay. The, one of the famous ones here in Wisconsin is the beast of Bray road. Okay. Associated with the Michigan dog man and so on and so forth. Supposed to be half wolf, half wolf, half man. All right, Bray Road's about a two-mile stretch. Hardly any lights at all to light up the road. So it's very dark at night. I can easily see misidentifications happen there because we have wolves and coyotes all over the place. Right. right. Um, but when we got to this land, because I found this guy, I got connected with this guy, Um and we went down to his land, and it was early. Was it like before noon? It was September, or August. It was, yeah, it was August. It was like we got early, there at eleven o'clock in the morning. We talked. We were there. We were there at eleven o'clock. Did filming for about eight hours. We were there for about eight hours or so. Did filming, just talking to this guy, showing us the cast, showing us pictures. We show up just expecting, you know, stories about this beast. Uh-uh. Mm. Got a lot more than what we bargained for, you know, when we got there. He's yeah. got more going on out there than than um, you would think was out there. Yeah. So that's that's why we we're that's why we decided to take our footage we got from it and make a documentary out of it, and then go. We're going to be going back and spending a night there and doing a night investigation with him. Plus, we're, that's why we're looking for um, look at witnesses the, to to interview as well. Trail cam. Nice trail cam pictures because he's <coughs> pretty recent ones too i can nice show you. I'll show you. that's that is, hang on just a second let me show you something all right right here is what we believe is bigfoot hair cool <laughs> and uh squatch man he found a what he calls a hooch. Uh, it's a structure like a shelter out in the I've forest. You know, I've heard about those. I've seen one here. Yeah, I saw, from the, I saw it from the highway once when we were like going between here where I live now in Wisconsin, and um, it's basically it was in the Kettle Marine Forest area. Uh, that we drove by, and which is a very big stretch. Um, but we drove by it, and it was like the traffic was stalled, and we were almost at a complete stop. And I just looked over, and I'm like, "Is that what I really think it is?" And I was like reaching for my phone, and didn't have it. And it's like, "Ah, oh, shit!" <laughs> well, you need to go back there. Yeah. Yeah, but, but uh, I don't remember where it was? Yeah. This was yes. like the first summer after I moved out here. It was like the first summer after I moved out here and the wife was using her cell phone for, for navigation to get us to where we were going. I got you. I got you. Well, this hair that I've got here, uh, Greg found a big wad of it kind of in under one of the logs of that hooch. And, uh, he he gave us a little sample of it and it's uh i don't know it's i mean it's it doesn't feel like like any hair of anything that i know of you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. right. uh, of course you know mine has been contaminated cuz i couldn't resist reaching in there and feeling it but he's got some that hasn't been touched yet that he wants to get sampled or you know analyzed at some point and uh but uh We'll see how that goes. That's very expensive, and he's not a guy of wealth, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah, I think that's all of us out here on, in the field, <laughs> or at least exactly. the majority of us. It, it'd, be, it'd be nice to prove it, but then there's so many different theories out there. It'd be wonder if it's even possible to prove its existence. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, that's just like, uh, that's like any evidence that we produce, any of us. Yeah. No matter what you have that you you know you know what what you experienced 
you know what you have on camera or what you mm -hmm. have on audio you're gonna put it out there and people are gonna be like yeah well that's a lens flare or that's a bug or that's okay. you know somebody whispering while you're doing your EVP session whatever okay now let's see now that. you're you're giving stuff away stop it <laughs> <laughs> no but there there you go I'm not zooming in on these because I don't have that capability on this this particular program. I'm looking, trying to see if I can see where it's at. All right. Go back to the other picture, Joe. That's the first picture. Okay. Now point use your no before you do it, use your pointer. You use the cursor and put yeah, it under the limb. This is the second picture. Yeah. I was telling you to go to under the limb with your with your uh, oh, it's right there. cursor. Now this is a trail cam that's set up to shoot three three shots simultaneously, you know, in a row. Yeah, pow, pow, pow. Like within, yeah. Within like seconds of, of each other. And this is from October of last year. You can see the date right there, eighteen uh -huh. October, twenty twenty, and um, it was like four. 24, 23, 424 in the evening. Okay. I'll go to the next one, Joe. And there it is. Getting bigger. It's like you can see it as it's coming in. Yeah, it's getting. It's, because here it wasn't and it, here at all. Those are the only three we got. The first picture that was taken. This was the second picture that was taken. And there's your third one. It got closer. Huh. Because now look at yeah, like 425. That's interesting. This so what do you guys picture. think is there? It's hard to say. I mean, the other pictures that we've got from this place is just like... I'm going to take your pictures away from you. <laughs> He's giving away the store, isn't he? house is freezing here now. Yeah, the, for some reason, you just went... Yeah, I'm trying to get... Now, the, now, you, now you goofed it up. I can't get my mouse back. There we go. <laughs> I felt like we were stepping into a portal there for a minute. There were just more and more versions of us. I think he was. He was just totally <laughs> screwing it up there. <laughs> That's possible. I mean, somebody here said drone. It it is. It is possible. That it could be a drone. I, that's possible. But I'm not. I'm not certain the way. You know, these these pictures are three seconds or within like a second of each other. Right. And a drone move that fast. Yeah, mine won't. <laughs> Mine's pretty one. fast, but I don't know. If, I don't know if it could get out of frame yeah, the completely. First, in the first three picture, seconds. you don't even see it. The second picture, you see it in the distance. You can barely see it. You know, a little spot. The third picture is like right under that limb. Yeah, yeah. So, does will a drone move that fast? Mine won't. And these, the, like I said, these pictures, the camera snaps, and it it's it's a it's a uh, like a half a second or a second shutter speed. Uh-huh. So and it takes three consecutive pictures and then it'll it'll reset to do another set. Right. And it, it's movement and heat that causes these to go off. These are all trail cams that he has. Right. Right. Yeah, that's definitely interesting. You know, uh we got a theory and I don't know how you guys feel about it, but uh I think that a lot of paranormal activity and cryptids and some of the UFO activity that's out there is interdimensional type things. Uh, and they're all connected. I, agree I had that. a feeling you were going to go there, and that's kind of how I look at it, too. I mean, it, it would explain a lot of things because... It would, it would know, explain a lot, yes. Nobody's ever found a carcass, you know, right? bones, or any solid scientific proof. Of right, scripted, you know, and then when you see a lot of the evidence for the cryptids, there's um, UFOs or lights in the sky or orbs or something involved. Exactly, with those sightings as well. Yeah, you know, it, it's just yeah, and you know, people that say, "Well, that's impossible." Well, you must be the type that sit there and believe we're the only people on a planet in this universe. Right. Yeah. 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 I just, I mean, we've had, we have gone out with Squatch Man 
and set out rim pods and millimeters and things like that in the woods and where we could see them, you know, mm-hmm. and know that there's nothing around them, but gotten the same kind of activity that you get with ghost hunting prior to having an experience with a tree knock or finding tracks or actually seeing, you know, a figure moving through the woods. Right. Hearing its growl or whatever. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to explain. Well, the way to explain that is a portal or something might have opened and set those, that equipment off. I mean, if, especially if you're out in the woods, you think about this, you're out in the woods, there's not a whole lot of electronics that could interfere and set that stuff off if you're not too Exactly. Yeah, you know, unless you're real close to a highway and then you got, you know, all the semi-truck radio well, activity. Or yeah, the, the semi-truck radios, you know, they'll still kill, like, like the old cars. You, you got, like, the. here's a good example. An old Volkswagen bug, they use solenoids in their engine compartments. And you can be cruising along in a, in a Volkswagen bug and, and a semi be so, coming up beside you. All you got to do is hit that freaking button and it'll kill your car. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've actually had that happen. I had a 62 bug and I had a damn trucker do that purposely just to screw with me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, yeah. Um, so, when... You know, when you're out in, in a woods area, if you're nowhere around where there's power lines or, or any kind of, of electro, electronics at all, then, yeah, the only the only true explanation could be something like that to where you had like a portal open that, that caused an electrical field that caused all this to start happening. Well, yeah, but exactly. Yeah, I suppose I forgot about that, too. Somebody. Well, else. yeah, because yeah. limestone is crystalline. And quartz is pure crystal. And anybody that, that deals with or knows of uh, uh, mediums and psychics, some of them also like to use crystals. Yeah. Because there are energies in crystals. There's lots of energies stored in crystals. Yes. And if we could ever figure, if, if man could ever truly figure out crystals, we would never have to worry about a power source ever again. No, no. We could put the Middle East out of business, I think. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> so, um, do you uh, follow any leads or anything about uh, UFOs since you go into the cryptids part? Well, uh, we have definitely seen some things in the sky uh, that uh, we can't explain. Mm-hmm. Uh, we There's a uh, there's a place up near the forest where we go big funny, Bigfoot hunting mm-hmm. that uh, is actually called UFO Mountain because there's a lot of sightings there. Where's that? Uh, it's in southern Indiana. UFO Mountains in southern Indiana. Yeah, it's wow. I never heard that's of a that. that's a nickname. Okay, that's uh, okay. and and I can't give out the exact location because Squatch Man would kill me. I think. <laughs> if I put it out on a podcast and he had 500 people come invading his woods for some weekend. But uh, no, uh, we have not actually gone on a UFO hunt or UFO expedition, anything like that. I don't think but it's I some- Well, it's not really hunts or expeditions. It's kind of, it's kind of, you know, you go on and like spend a, a weekend in the woods, like you're camping, and then, but you, but what you're doing is you're mostly watching the sky. Yeah. Well, we, we do that. We do a lot of investigations at cemeteries, or you know, on the grounds of uh, Indian massacres, mm-hmm. things like that. And anytime we're doing anything outside, whether it's Bigfoot hunting or ghost hunting or whatever, we always look look up as much as we can too, because like I said, I think there's so much of a crossover between the cryptids, the UFOs and the paranormal that, you know, we're always, our eyes and ears are always open for everything. And uh, there's a place here about 40 minutes from where I live. That's a, it's Casey cemetery. People call it the gates of hell. And uh, you can look that up. It's, it's got, yeah, it's got all three things. In abundance. I mean, it's got cryptids, Dogman, Bigfoot, uh, UFO activity, 
ghosts, demons, you name it. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's a crazy thing. It happens. It happens to us. <laughs> it's, it's true. I don't know. I don't know if we're cursed or blessed, but <laughs> we wind up in some situations. Well, I think it depends on how you look at it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Well, you know, to backtrack a little bit, you know, when we were talking about how nothing can be found, right, of the Bigfoot. Right. Now, the other theory people have come up with is that it's a descendant of the giant, what do you call it? Gigantopithecus. Gigantopithecus. Thank you. I'm not too good at pronouncing that one. (laughs) All right. If that were true, then there should have been proof. Bones. Bones. Or carbon. Remains. Yes. Uh, Or scat. Something. Yeah. You would think. Yep. I personally, I'm not convinced it's a flesh and blood creature. Because well, I mean, I had we of here, right? Well, I mean, and it's I think it's capable of interdimensional travel at will, basically. No, the no. the story I was talking about, where the Bigfoot was running up the hill at us, and Denise ran after it. I mean, the thing got within no more than 30 yards of us. It was in the dark. I mean, it was, it wasn't completely dark, but it was, it was dark enough that we couldn't see down in the woods exactly where it was, but it was coming up the hill at us clear as a bell. I mean, just a large something come crashing up the hill. Denise runs toward it. All of a sudden the sound just stops and we go down there and look all around and there's nothing. We'd never heard it retreat. We never heard it go back down the hill or anything. It's just like it, Ran up the hill and then just vanished. Did you look for tracks? Yeah. Did you find any? But I mean, it was there were so many leaves and everything, and uh, you know, it was very heavy wooded area, and we we didn't see anything. But uh, I mean, it's just. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like how could it disappear so fast without a trace? Right. Yeah. I mean, because it was whatever it was was huge. I mean, it it sounded like you know. And then there's the other theory where it's possibly, you know, one of those shapeshifters, you know. Yeah, that could be a, a Bigfoot one minute and a squirrel the next. Yeah. <laughs> or something. I don't know. I mean, those stories have been around, and, and, and those stories, I, I, I know the United States is, is full of Native American history all over, but some of it's richer in other states than some, but around here it's pretty rich. Yeah. You know, and... You come across those shapeshifter type stories a lot when you're looking into places such as like when we were, uh, I was doing research on Astalon Park, you know, which we we investigated a couple of years ago. There's a place here near us. It's called Astalon. Um, It's it's an old burial. There's an old burial mound there and well, a couple of burial mounds and some effigy mounds. uh, What is that? It's in Lake Mills. It's in Lake Mills, just outside of Lake Mills. It's actually it's a small little community it's, called Aztalan. Yeah, and it's not too far from uh, where the pyramid <laughs> is in the lake. Okay. Um, Rock Lake um, is Rock in lake, lake Mills. Yeah. And there are actual pyramids in the bottom of that lake. Yeah. Really? Mayan yeah. pyramids. Wow. Yeah, they, That's that, interesting. It, you should be able to find videos of it on, on YouTube. To where the di- there's actually a guy that do- dove down, and and uh, took some pictures and videos, videos of it. Pictures of it, yeah. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. That's that's cool. That stuff is uh, that's another thing that's always fascinated me. You know, things like ancient mysteries and well, pyramids yeah. and. Yeah, the Astalon Park is is a lot of uh, Indian burial grounds mounds there and there was one in specific that they've got kind of protected and fenced off a little bit but the legend in the there is that if you stand up there and face the stone that's engraved it's called the princess burial mound Uh you'll hear her uh, shell belts behind you you know rattling behind you because she was buried with three shell belts Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what makes this story even more interesting. They they did some. They did excavating there. Yeah, excavating there. They dug up her bones, 
and took them and put them on display in a Milwaukee museum. Meanwhile, they had all kinds of tribes from around Native American tribes from the area. All over Wisconsin telling them they need to put them back. Uh, yeah, down there absolutely. In front of that museum protesting mm-hmm. them removing and putting these bones on display. Anyhow, she's still there in storage in that museum. Yeah, that's yeah, that's so not cool. The activity since then, the activity has gone up. In I guarantee it. Yeah, you know, and I guarantee it. Not only her spirit, but other spirit, well, other her. spirit, blah, spirits other associated spirits, with the yeah. area. We have. Our, I'm had, sure would be. We had an interesting experience there. The first time we went there, we had an interesting experience. We had stuff happen. Brand new, brand new, brand new video recorders. You know, yeah, we brand new camera, there. brand new SD card in the camera. You know, brand new batteries, fully charged. We go out there, we do all this recording. We had our EMF meter just going nuts. I mean, it was literally going nuts because I was on one of the mounts. And there's there's no overhead so wire. I put it down right there on the step. It had like a wooden step that went up to the mount, you know, great big squared logs. Right. I put it on that step, and I sat there, and we zoomed in on it as it was going nuts, you know. So, that, minute, yes, yes. so that my movement wasn't interfering. You could see that I wasn't shaking or, you know, bouncing. Right. I set it down right. on a solid ground, and... And filmed it. Got home, tried to get the footage off the SD card, and it was corrupt. Wow. Yeah, we had no footage. That uh, that sounds familiar. <laughs> uh, very familiar. Uh, the incident I told you about at Brushy Mountain, uh, it happened in the cafeteria of the prison there. Yeah. I was snapping pictures the whole time we were there. You know, I, I was snapping pictures in various areas of the prison. Uh, on my phone, where I was taking those pictures, I've got pictures from everywhere but the cafeteria. And I know I took about 30 pictures in the cafeteria. Wow. But where we had that physical attack I told you about, mm-hmm. nothing from that room. And we had two two video cameras that got completely wiped that were in that room. The audio that's on the video that we did capture of the attack, the audio got wiped. So all you've got is a you know a silent film of this lady getting dragged across the floor. Wow. I don't know. I mean, well, I've heard of stuff like that happening more before it happened to us. Even I mean, you know, there, there's like the Forest Hill Cemetery. People say you go through there, you know, your cell phone dies on you, the battery drains, it's all gone. You know, your your flashlights stop working, everything. You know, and it's one of the oldest cemeteries in Madison. Wisconsin. It's actually the oldest cemetery in the city of Madison. And it's almost right in the center. Um, it's also got, it has Civil War graves. It has World War One, World War Two graves. I believe it even has some Vietnam graves in there. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, and some of the legends are if you go there certain times and certain times at night, you can actually see soldiers walking through the, the um, grave areas. Plus, not only that, this cemetery is built around effigy mounds yeah. yeah okay there are effigy mounds inside the cemetery yeah and i grew up right across from that cemetery and i had no idea we used to play ghosts in the graveyard there because you know, <laughs> grandma's house was right across the street and then next door was aunt and uncles right yeah so, and that that's something there too um you know i told you i used to sneak in waverly hills all the time I uh, live three minutes from it right now. Um, and a lot of people that I grew up with, you know, when they found out I was a guide there or whatever, they're like, oh, that place isn't haunted. We used to sneak in there when we were teenagers and we never saw anything. I think that you have to be open to it for one. And you have to, you have to, yeah, this is true because I've seen, I've seen light bulbs go off on skeptics, you know, just boom, like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, this is real. But, I mean, and it's not constant. I mean, you know, and all the time I spent at Waverly, you know, 
doing security or hosting event, hosting investigations up there, uh, you know, there were times when I could walk through that place and it's a big old empty building and nothing was going on. Mm-hmm. But security before? What's that? You worked security before? Yeah, I, when uh, I would host investigations on like three nights a week, and then two nights a week I would do security. I used to be a security officer for a long time. Yeah, it's it's I Waverly. Given its popularity and you know how many times it's been on TV and everything, we <laughs> got. I would have to actually do stuff. You know, <laughs> I mean, we would get trespassers three, four, or five yeah, times a month. I, I can believe it. So you I mean, sneak in, and then you'd have to, and then later you ended up being the one to stop people from sneaking in. That's yeah, kind exactly. Of, that's yeah. Kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a role reversal, but uh, yeah, I like how it works. <laughs> so, so in all this, in all this time, have you ever had any spirits follow you home? Yes. Yes, I think, I think if you guys have been at this as long as I have, which you know I'm pretty sure you have, if not longer, you have too. Uh, I always have them. <laughs> yeah, Denise is. It's like 24 seven for her. Um, she's. Uh, I don't know if she's just got you know not a, just a third eye open, but like a fifth, sixth, and seventh or what. But they're always around her. But uh, yeah, I've had them. I've had them follow me on a few occasions. I've been in this apartment for four years, or going on four years, and I see uh, I could be sitting on my couch, and then you can see inside the room where I'm at right now. I have the lights off in here, computers off, screens off, no lights on in here, and I'll be sitting there, and I'll see a shadow move back and forth in front of the door. Oh, you're just seeing things. You got bad eyes. <laughs> it's just a car it's going down. There, goes. Goes. there he goes. I do have a question for you. Do you, yes. do you ever, what do you think of, of when there's like these buildings and, and I, the only way, the only reason I say this is because you brought up security and then it got me thinking. Um, and that's not always a good thing, by the way. Oh, no. <laughs> um, you got these old buildings. It's been around since like the 1800s, right? And some of them turn up pretty, pretty haunted for various reasons, okay? Yes. And then all of a sudden, they tear them down, (coughs) you know, many years down the road because they're no longer in function or whatever, you know? What do you think of that? I think more people should try to preserve some of that history. I I think that that, I think that's a lot of what we do as paranormal investigators when we go and pay for an investigation at these places. That helps preserve them. Uh, helps keep them open. I, I'm all about preserving history in every way, shape, and form. Uh, y'all are being invaded. Uh, the, girl, the girlfriend. Oh, okay. talking to the dog, and the dog come in here and open the door. I just want to make sure it's not all getting on audio here. I got you. Uh, but uh, no, I. I cannot stand to see uh, an old building, especially some of these old beautiful Victorians or whatever that, you know, gets bulldozed and torn to the ground. I mean, I don't think that, uh, I don't necessarily know if the spirits even know. I think a lot of times they'll still, they'll be right there and just going about their business without like nothing ever changed. You know, the reason I asked that is because there was a, there was an old building that I used to work in. I was a security supervisor and it used to go full force, but I also worked there for the company that owned the building. It was Railback. Okay. And it was one of their uh, packaging plants and battery manufacturing places where they actually made batteries there. They made the mm-hmm. triple A there, if I remember right. Anyway, that place was built like in 1800 something. Okay, had a big thing to Ray, Ray, whatever, the guy that founded Railback. Right. And um, had a big statue out front and everything. And the place could be spooky at night, okay, if you were there alone for for many reasons because of the critters, because it was like a wide 
built-in factory type warehouse. So you'd have all kinds right. of critters around. Um, everything from possums to squirrels. But the thing is, these these people would talk about the ghost stories that would happen there and stuff that would happen all of a sudden the forklift wouldn't start and they'd come back after, you know, oh about 20, 30 minutes and then it would start up. You know, and and just weird stuff happening to them or the keys were in the ignition but now they're gone yeah you know? yeah and people seeing full apparitions dressed in old civil war costumes and stuff you know yeah and, and i used to work security there i didn't see anything but i heard a lot of noises that didn't make sense so yeah the building had a lot of activity that was definitely paranormal or unexplainable you know yeah yeah and i would have loved for that building to still been there to be able to actually go in and do an investigation but once yeah. it closed down it only stood there for about two years and i wasn't doing this yet right and then they tore it's it down and now it's gone but i i kind of always wonder if maybe that energy might be where the location used to be. I firmly believe that it, that that's the case nine times out of 10 anyway. Uh, I mean, there's a, you look at a lot of the hauntings that are out there that, uh, that we investigate today. A lot of them are not old, ancient Indian burial ground kind of places. A lot of them are, you know, fairly new homes in a developed neighborhood that, you know, was, that was built in the eighties or whatever. Right. And, you know, the, the history is not ancient with this place, but something happened on that land 200 years ago, 400 years ago, a thousand years ago that is still there. Yeah. Yeah. And normally those are like uh, residual haunting. So, those are, you know, like a, a video playback. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Very seldom do you get an intelligent haunt like that, but. Right. Um, it can happen. Intelligent haunts in areas like that. There, I think, would have to be the person would have to be somehow, uh, or the the spirit would have to be somehow connected to the land itself, right? Yeah. The building with that plant being wide open, it would have had to have been connected to the land. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, most likely because most of that plant was just old, like I said, it was built in the 1800s, so a lot of it was your old wooden, almost barns, almost looked like they converted horse stalls in some cases, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's just amazing because when you, I got a little snoopy when I was a security guard there and I found one of the reports on a desk and I, I didn't snoop, shouldn't have snooped, but I did. But in a place like that, and, and it's common knowledge too, in a place like that, when you're in a factory, like packaging plant and stuff like this, there can happen accidental deaths. And yes. there was a few at that plant you know, as well. Yeah. So I'm always curious and I'm curious about going back and checking that out. But I don't know if that's I good. would, if, I mean, if the land is accessible and I was you, I would go I don't, I don't see what I could do. I haven't been back to Madison and I don't know how many years and I don't even remember that area, what it looked like. Yeah. But I know it's pretty much gone. Yeah. Like reconstructed. There's, the there's new development there. I worked at a cement plant for uh, 16 years that uh, that was haunted. Um, I worked in the control room. One of the jobs, I did everything there from sweep the floors to work the control room and everything in between. But uh, one of the jobs I had was a control room operator, and we had cameras in a few different places of the plant to you know monitor equipment and things like that. And... Uh, you, you know, you would see a guy in a red flannel shirt walking around, checking equipment out. Hello, Natalie. Hey, Natalie. Oh, uh, you would, I mean, and we'd, I'd send somebody out there like, hey, there's somebody down in the, uh, in the finish mill building wandering around that's not supposed to be here. And so, you know, other guys would go look and there's nobody there. And nobody, you know, at the plant with a red flannel shirt on and, you know, things like that, but it was a big heavy industrial site 
And I mean, many people have died there over the years, you know, falls down scaffolding yeah, or whatever. And the longer and crushed the older, by equipment. Yeah, and the longer and the older the business, the more that that's happened there. Yeah, yeah, that one's been open yeah. since 1909, so it's been around a long time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd love to check some of those places out just out of curiosity and talk to some of those places. I mean, there's one here in Madison. Well, here in Madison. I'm not even in Madison anymore. <laughs> uh, but in Madison, there's like the old Gardner's Bakery. I don't remember what it's called now, but it was uh, the Gardner's Bimbo Bakery. bought it, and now it's closed down. Oh, it is closed down now? Yep. That place has been around since since I was before I was a kid, and and you know I'm in my fifties, and that place had to been in that location for many years, and I'm just curious how haunted, you know, that okay. might actually be. You know, I used to hear stories from the other security officer, the supervisor that worked there, because we used to talk to, on the phone at night when I worked at Railroad, so back and forth because we'd have to check in. Right. She told me some of the stuff that she see and hear, and it's like we got to check into that, getting into that building. <laughs> I, I think that there's, I think there's activity pretty much anywhere you go. To be honest, uh, it's just a matter of being there at the right time and under the right conditions, and and find it enough to see it, and being in the right frame of mind. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know, I when I was growing up, I couldn't believe how how little I knew about Wisconsin and the area and all these stories and legends until we started doing this. And I started, you know, because we stick to Wisconsin right now, you know, because it's kind of expensive to travel, right? Because you're gonna want to spend the night in most locations. I've got a big bucket list, and it just keeps getting bigger. <laughs> I know what you mean. Speaking of bucket list, what's on your bucket list? My bucket list is uh, places like the Birdcage Theater uh, in Tombstone, uh, Alcatraz. Oh, that'd be a good one. Oh, I'd love to um, there. The Conjuring House. Oh, um, one. There's a gazillion places in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, the history goes so much further back over there, you know, oh, yeah. civilized history goes so much further back that, you know, I mean, you got buildings that were built in 900 AD that are still standing and things like that, you know. Yeah, look at all the castles over there, you know. Yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, but I mean, I guess that the most reasonable thing that I could say is my bucket list place would be, uh, the bird cage. I, I'd love to go out there. Uh, my mom, uh, she used to travel out West quite a bit before she passed and she wasn't into the paranormal or anything, but she took a tour, just a regular daytime tour of the bird cage theater in tombstone one time. And she came back saying, Oh my gosh, that place is hated. And <laughs> you know, she said, there were things going on when we were in there. And, you know, there was no way, no other way to explain it. And, you know, she wasn't a big believer in the paranormal, but uh, she she knew for a fact that that place was haunted. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a place I want to get out there just uh, to kind of validate some of her stories from back then. So, I guess we're going to call this one and stick around and we'll talk some more. Okay. So, well, I've enjoyed it. Everyone. And thank you for joining us. Um, make sure you, you want to plug any of your website. Out. Well, uh, Pac-Man Paranormal on Facebook, Midnight Wolfpack Productions on Facebook, and our YouTube channel. Uh, go to YouTube, look for Midnight Wolfpack on YouTube, Midnight Wolfpack Productions. Hit the subscribe button. It's free to do. Doesn't cost you a dime. And uh, just keep watching what we've got coming up in the future. We're going to be doing some uh, some documentary work. We're going to be working with Miss Natalie Jones and uh, and a lot of other people in the field, hoping to work with Kendall and Vera Welton from the house in between. Uh, we're doing a lot and trying to stay positive and smile. 
despite <laughs> despite Denise, we try to stay positive and smile. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, but, uh, we're getting married next Friday, so I guess you know, she's getting all this in. Congratulations! Thank you, you know, very much. You know, marriage is punishment for shoplifting in some countries. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess vacuuming is my punishment tonight. I don't know. <laughs> Lord help us. Oh, that's okay. I, I, I've been married. I've been married for eleven years, so it, almost. Yeah, I, I've been married a couple times. Valentine's Day will be 11 years. Well, this is my second. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, stay safe, everybody. And don't forget to check us out at utterlyinsaneproductions.com. Everybody safe. take care. Next Wednesday. <laughs>